is an overwhelming feeling to, number one, have people in the room. And that was the feeling we had yesterday. Uh, with it being uh, St. Patrick's Day yesterday, it was marked basically a full year of the time when uh, the lockdown had begun for, for our businesses. Uh, and for me, reminiscing on that yesterday when I had a staff that was cooking food and guests out here seating and uh, eating and drinking, uh, a year ago I, was, I just had to lay off 40 people. And uh, it was just going to be myself, my manager, and a cook. That was all that was left. We are going to try to take takeout and see what we could do. And just keep the doors open. That was always the number one goal. Keep the doors open so that we could get through the two weeks to flatten the curve and be able to bring our employees back and, and get back to operate and do the things we do. Uh, they didn't take place, you know? And three of us busted out a bunch of to-go and tried to move through all the corned beef we had bought because we knew we were going to be able to use all of it. We wanted to prevent as much from possible of being put back in the freezer. Uh, but after the, working yesterday and sitting down with a few of my staff, it was probably the first time that I actually felt like I just sat down and thought about what this year was like and the fact that how we've come so far and, uh, and to be here and, and still be open and have the opportunity to have guests in here smiling and laughing and listen to Irish music and my staff, you know, experiencing a hard work day. Uh, all that was great. Um, when the pandemic first hit, my feeling always was probably like most sole proprietors in this industry. Uh, we're hardworking people. We work hard. It's what we do. It's the nature of this business. We have other, no other choice. And uh, if it was only going to take hard work to get through this, well, then, in my opinion, the virus messed with the wrong people because we will, perse we will persevere. Um, and, and unfortunately, not all of us were able to get to that point. Um, but there are some of us, most of us in this state, that, that did get this far with the help of those behind me. Um, but honestly, the sacrifices fell off on the employees. Uh, my employees who had to be laid off, that didn't know where their next paycheck was coming from, you know, calling, asking, hey, you got a few hours here and there to help me out. Uh, that, that was the toughest part. And in the sacrifices that our families made, uh, I know that, uh, you know, I can't thank my wife enough for raising my two children this year basically by herself because I had to be here every single day. It's just been a very difficult year. And so I give credit to my staff and the families of all our restaurateurs that have had to persevere this, through this as well. Could not have gotten this far, absolutely, though, without uh, the help, like I said before, uh, first and foremost, of Scott Dolch and the Restaurant Association. Uh, from day one, the association was a very useful tool to all our restaurant tours. Scott got on uh, conference calls every single morning, and I'd pull in this parking lot, and I'd stare out to an empty lot, and knew it was going to be empty for the foreseeable future, and didn't know where my future led. But uh, people, in, uh, my peers, like Dan, and others in the Restaurant Association, we talk about it every day. It's kind of a misery loves comfort. And it was very important for us to, to lean on each other. And the information that flew and came forward was fast and rapid at times, especially when it came to programs and assistance that were out there. And I, I spoke to other business people that, in other uh, different trades that were blown away by my information that I had of things that they could get assistance with and help with, whether it be at the federal level or at the state level. So I want to thank Scott. Uh, and then, uh, obviously, the governor's administration, as well as uh, Mr. Lehman at the uh, Department of uh, Economic. Uh, the relationship that Scott and the Restaurant Association gained with those people uh, was, was a lifeline, unlike any other. They fought for us at the, at the Capitol, you know, and, and the governor served you were phenomenal in regards to, you know, when other areas maybe were going back, you know, you, you stood strong and felt like this is what needed to be done uh, to keep these doors open, and I, and I thank you for that, because honestly, uh, I feel like as Connecticut, we, we did a phenomenal job getting through this. We're not done yet, but I mean, I think we're, we're definitely a, a, a model to be looked at. Um, obviously, the usage of the state grants, I was fortunate enough as a small business to, require, uh, to receive two of those grants. I can't tell you, you know, that helped me pay taxes, that helped me pay some bills that were starting to climb up. Like, I don't know where we'd be without those things. And then we're very fortunate enough to be a uh, recipient of the two uh, PPP uh, program monies as well. Uh, with having, uh, we were fortunate enough to have a patio that was already constructed, uh, and that really gave us uh, an opportunity to stay in business over this, over this year. I'll be honest, if we didn't have the patio and the ability to have outside dining come May 20th, um, I, I say often I don't think we'd be here still. Um, but today and tomorrow, uh, again, is another step in the right direction to making this restaurant industry whole, keeping my place afloat, keeping my people employed and the other restaurateurs in this state employed. Uh, and, and we've done nothing but take small little steps, with the exception of rolling back in October to 2.1. 
the, the, the governor and his team and, and the state, we, we really stayed on a path to, to not take any more step back. Right? It was always, it might have been a small step, but it was always, you know, we're moving in the right direction and, and tomorrow is another step in that. And uh, to letting, you know, and I think that also helps with the uh, consumer confidence and letting guests know that, you know, we have done this well. You look around you, not only my place, but places in the state, we, we've done a, a, a Herculean job of trying to keep our customers' feelings that they're in a safe environment and that we can operate this and we can do this correctly. Um, and uh, I, I, like I said, it, it, it's just, it, it's exciting to feel like there's a light at the end of the tunnel and it might not be a freight train this time. Because there's been many parts of the year where that literally was one step forward and four steps backwards. Uh, and so it's really, really great to have you all here today and I look forward to having more and more people come through our doors and feel safe. And that just obviously not for this restaurant, for all restaurants in this community and all across the state. And uh, like I said, we couldn't be here without, uh, they took an army of people to get to this point and those, the majority of those people are right behind me. So I thank all these people very much for what they've done. And I thank, uh, thank the public for, for supporting us. You know, actually, I don't, I don't want to leave here without saying, the community in this, I saw people five, six times a week just come take out. I know there's no way they were eating all that food. I had, I had one of my number one customers who come here for 40 years. He came in one day and bought two, he bought uh, $2,000 worth of gift cards. A month ago, he brought them back and threw them back at me. He goes, I just want to let you know I never use these, throw these out. You know? This is what happened. This was the support. You know, people want to see people succeed, and uh, it's, it's been an overwhelming experience, but one that I'll never forget, obviously, and one that hopefully makes us all better for it. So I really do appreciate your time here, and thank you very much.